In Athens, in front of the parliament building, they have their Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And apparently every hour on the hour, and I'm under the impression this happens always, they do a changing of the guard. So that is something that happens quite a bit, and we actually haven't seen that, but what we did see was something that only happens once a week, which is a march that accompanies a change of the guard at 11 a.m. on Sundays, only once a week. With a marching band. Yeah, so there's like the whole thing, and they've got this big, they, they close down these streets, and there's like a bunch of tourists and stuff, like a lot of people show up for it, and then they, I guess they do the changing of the guard ceremony, which I think we got there right as it was ending, and the march began, and then they march up the street that they closed down which is a pretty major road and um, there's a there's a marching band and then there are like traditionally dressed guards and they have got like a special type of outfit on that essentially looks I'm, like I'm just I'm just gonna say it yeah it's a bit clownish you think it looks it's clownish? a bit clownish it's got the balls on the feet man <laughs> it's got the little poofs and I just whoa and some, I, of, some of the music was really like, hmm, I, I'd be careful. I, I think that, that I think that music might have been some important jams, man. I thought it was pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't unpleased with it. I just it gave me a feeling. Yeah, it had an has, atmosphere. The outfit has some rough outfit has some ruffles. I will definitely give you. Oh, that. it's got ruffles and a skirt. <laughs> it's very unique looking. I've never seen anything that looks quite like that before. I can definitely say that I had never seen something like that before, and. You as a big person. Yeah. Those dudes were big. Yeah, they were. They were tall. huge, and I yeah. kept looking like they, they they feel like they're taller than Eric, and they're wearing the special shoes. It's a dank which, outfit. Which might give them extra height, but they're still huge. Yeah. I I, I, so I felt like every single one of them towered over me, and I thought like at least one of them is going to be short. But no, that that's qualification for this job is you must be towering. Maybe I should apply. You should. I. You, I can totally see you. We're gonna have to would, shave this. Would and you be, uh, keep, the yeah, keep the mustache? Yeah, keep the mustache. That yeah, was their, definitely their part of it. Their mustaches were sharp. impressive. Yeah, sharp is the way to say that. So they have these special outfits, and they also are wearing special shoes that um, maybe they have metal on the bottom or something. Maybe they, the balls are made of metal. Maybe that's what you're hearing. Because you're hearing this loud clicking sound as they walk. That's in time and everything with the drums and stuff that are playing. And um, I, I heard overheard somebody speaking to like a tour guide speaking to their group. We're still and, in tours. Yeah, we're still doing that. And Every she day. said that the, the the shoes weigh one and a half kilos each. So they've got three kilos worth of shoes on to clamp down on. And then they've got like a special walk they've got to do. And this is like not a short distance. The whole thing took like 30 minutes. So like it's quite a walk. I mean, they're going kind of slow, yeah. but it's because they're hauling us huge ass shoes. I can get some of those shoes. I can work it out. <laughs> you could. Yeah. And then they come up a street and they turn and they go into like a military compound. And it felt like we weren't allowed to go in kind of. Like it but didn't look like- all these people going Yeah, in then there was a lot of people in and out. And there's like these girls and like, like kind of skimpy dresses and stuff like flirting with the guards to get in and stuff like this is all really going on and I ended up asking someone like how do you get in and they were like yeah know somebody but then and, she was like maybe yeah. if you just ask but I kind of feel like maybe we are hitting on me yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe I don't know so we don't know exactly what happened at the very end but they went into a military compound and then it was over <laughs> there's a lot of orange trees just on the side of the road here and it seems like fair game to anyone there's a ton of oranges on the ground and I had a tall person that I know steal me one that looked relatively okay. It's incredibly juicy. Um, the smell is outstanding. Can you smell it over there? <laughs> I can smell it. They might be able to smell it, to be honest. Oh, wow. It's real drippy. And I recently talked to someone who said the best orange they ever had was one they took off a tree. And they will never buy oranges ever again. So this might change my life on oranges. And for some reason, I must peel the entire thing. It does seem like uh, it is, wow, incredibly wet. I'm gonna have the stickiest hands in the world. The orange is not good, it's not good. <laughs> I told you it wasn't an orange, man. I was like, those are not eatable oranges. <laughs> it's like a lemon. <laughs> and I like lemon, but when you're going for orange, ooh, it smells better than it tastes. <laughs> and I brushed my teeth, little known fact about me. I love toothbrush paste and uh, orange, juice. orange juice. Oh, it's like, a, it's like electricity. So you like, you like that? 
You I'm happy okay right with now? It. I'm okay with the reaction that I'm having between the toothpaste, but I'm not happy with the fact that my orange situation didn't work out. <laughs> I was like, yo, if those were edible oranges, they wouldn't be all over the ground like that. Somebody come and pluck them up. <laughs> You're gonna get sick. What? Never. More Greek food, because that's one of the best things to do here. Um, stuffed pepper, stuffed tomato, but we're here for the pastizio, and I just found this on the internet last night. It is friend of moussaka. It has layers of pasta, like circular pasta, that just look fantastic. And ground meat, and bischimel, bischimel? Uh, you, you have no idea the word that I'm trying to say, because cooking is not your world. Um, I can't pronounce the sauce, but uh, that just looks heavenly to me. Bechamel. Mm. I think it's how you say it. It's just like a kind of white sauce. Okay. Pretty darn good. Um, weirdly kind of tangy that I didn't, like a tang I didn't expect. Pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say it's blowing my mind, but uh, maybe moussaka is better. <laughs> so this is like pretty stark contrast to the place that we ate at yesterday or the day before, whenever it was that we shot the video about the restaurant that was like a really nice family restaurant stuff. And this seems more like they're just interested in getting tourists in and getting tourists out. And the dude isn't rude or anything, he's certainly nice, but when you listen to have conversations with all the other tables, it's like the same conversation that he has with us. And it's like, he's got points that he hits, trying to upsell you on things over and over and over. And something that's a little bit odd is we had this discussion about the dish that I ordered, these peppers. <laughs> and in the picture, it's got like cut up potatoes in, it, in, in the picture. And we were like, okay, like it comes with potatoes. And Katie had asked yeah, if we can okay. change it for rice. And he said, no, it's a set dish. It comes with the potatoes. And that makes sense because the peppers are actually stuffed with rice themselves. So we were like, okay. And he's like, but don't count the number of potatoes on the plate. Because like, he's like making a joke. Like it's not, may not be the exact same number. And then the dish came how, out. How many potatoes did you get? The dish came out and there are zero potatoes. <laughs> the and number I was, like, was zero. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, they must be coming on another dish. And we asked about it. And he was like, oh no, it just doesn't have potatoes today. But if you like to buy some potatoes, we'll sell you some potatoes. So it's just a little strange. It's not like the, like, this guy doesn't care about your experience, really. Like, you can just tell. Like, he's a perfectly fine person. But it's not like the place that we had, like, the, the, the last place where the guy was like, really wanted to make sure that you had a top-notch experience. So I'm going to jump into my no potatoes peppers. <laughs> and I'm not even really quite sure on how I'm supposed to get this out of here. But I'm glad we have bread because otherwise this wouldn't be a very filling thing. So yeah, see that rice? It's got some peppers. That's and, a tomato. Uh, tomato. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's red tomato, man. Peppers it's can be not red. Potato. <laughs> not potato. It's I mean it's okay. It's it's got a lot of like flavors and stuff that go on, but I, I, you can, I could read the place as soon as we sat down and ordered. Like, I knew that we were just gonna get like food, not like something that was extraordinary. And I think that's kind of what we've come across, and we just come across some food. It's funny because we had the perfect example of what I want to eat mm -hmm. at the last place. But it's right is, up against. What this you is the don't. perfect example of what I don't want. They were, they were just peddling uninspired cafeteria style tourist chow. Yeah. The the food was kind of chewy. It was dry. And there wasn't no, yeah, there was dry. There was, there was like, so. it, for me, like Greek food has oils and things like that, especially when you have moussaka or like a type of um, like a, a baked dish like we had with the. Ah, darn it, I've lost it. But yeah, it had no heart. It was like incredibly dry. Yours tasted like two days ago's lasagna. Yeah. That's what it tasted like. Like you microwave some lasagna. And and that guy came up to me and he was like, was it good? I was like, it was okay. <laughs> I've just yeah, started telling people like it is. It wasn't offensive. It was just like, it was. I feel like I wasted a meal in a way. Like I, I feel like I could have made that. 
Yeah. And that that's where I'm like, if I go to a restaurant, you're, you're the, not Greek. <laughs> the biggest thing, the, the biggest thing I want out of a restaurant is something I can't make at home. Mm. So if there's a BLT and maybe it's the best BLT in the world, I can make a pretty damn good BLT on my own. So I'll end up getting like uh, some something else on the menu that I can't make at home, even though maybe they're known for their BLTs. Like I struggle with that. I want something I can't make at mm. home, and I really, really thought that's what we were getting. Yeah. And with the stuffed peppers and the tomatoes, I could probably do that relatively if I, easily. Definitely at that quality. And now with the dish that I got, like I could follow the directions of a recipe and make a very dry that. Yeah. And it would be mm -hmm. equivalent. What I think this does highlight, though, is just how good the experience at the other restaurant yeah. we had was, and how much they cared. These people just didn't care. Just shovel the cafeteria food out, get the tourists out of the way whenever I have to deal with them again. Upsell, upsell, Up, upsell. Yeah, yeah, and everything was like, hey, I can. you want to buy this? You want to buy that? I'm not going to bring you the potatoes I said I was going to bring you, but I can sell you potatoes. Hey, like, here's another thing. Situation. At, at, at the restaurant that Grim. we really liked, yeah. they brought us out wine. Yeah, he just gave it to us. He just gave us some because wine. Because you're supposed to have Here, it. I asked, like, can we get some water? And many restaurants have just served us tap water. They'll just bring it to the table. That's what most restaurants are doing. Here, he tried to sell me a bottle of water yeah and yeah that, that's just sad they Bummer. don't care they, they're not worried about experience they're just worried about cash yeah they've got ours i tried to not leave so much money <laughs> how much did potatoes <laughs> she was like, cost yeah just deduct the cost of the potatoes we didn't get <laughs> he tried to charge me four and a half euros for potatoes outside of that oh yeah he did yeah, yeah. so that's what the, his value on potatoes is yep This little church caught our eye because of its location. It's a very small, old school looking church underneath this gigantic skyscraper. And that's not normal. Like usually when they would be putting a skyscraper in like this, you would think something like this would just get eliminated, you know? But apparently this has got a pretty um, strong significance to the people in the area, so it got to stick around. And it was built dedicated to the Virgin Mary like way, way back and um, women would go here before they gave birth to pray and um, hopefully get like, you know, uh, heavenly protection for the birth and make sure everything went smooth with the baby making and all that. At different points, it had been used for different things, of course, as all old buildings are. And at one point during the Greek War of Independence, uh, there was a guy that was here that was making bullets. And he was also making bullets for like the opposing side. So like he was making bullets for both teams, I think, and smuggling all these bullets out that he was making in trash bags in the middle of the night. So it's got a lot of little like interesting little tidbits going on for just this tiny little building. And I, I, we saw pictures of the inside and it looks really amazing, but it's locked right now. And I don't know if Sunday, like somebody's in there with a ladder and maybe they're like maintenance or something like that, but we're not able to go in at the moment. But just the outside of it is a pretty nice thing to find. I just, I just love how it's underneath this big, thing that is actually the Ministry of Education and Religion. So maybe it makes sense this is here. When we were in Cambodia, we went to Angkor Wat, and what is so amazing about Angkor Wat is seeing the temples and nature kind of colliding. The trees are taking over the temples, and it's just amazing looking. Here, commerce is kind of taking over this temple, but not in the way that it's destructing it, the way that it's kind of protecting it. Like, this church is going to get to be here forever, but there is so much commerce building up around it, it's ridiculous. So we started following this dog around because we're crazy people and we noticed that the dog had no people and the dog actually has no people. He is, uh, he or she, I haven't checked. <laughs> um, uh, the, the dog is kind of owned and taken care of by the area. The um, municipality has vaccinated the dog and neutered or spayed the dog so that it doesn't create any more further population. But. He just hangs out and people in the neighborhood treat him really good and he gets to sit in the AC of the stores and love all the people that might actually pet him if they don't think that he has an owner because we weren't going to touch him until we found out, oh, we can touch him, yay! And he's totally just cool. He's got this special tag that says that he's part of the city. This might be a landmark. <laughs> um, but if you see any dogs with these tags, they're special dogs. Give them some love. Pistachio cousin of baklava, from what I understand, a honey drenched, delicious, almost got hit on the side of the road here. <laughs> it kind of looks like Mont Blanc, the spaghetti sweets, but it also looks like um, little fringes of sugar. 
I am assuming I should just jump in. I want nuts. You gotta have nuts. It's kind of gelatinous in a way. There's a gelatinousness to it. This is a. Uh, I see why I got a knife. It's almost as if they took rice pudding that was not watery at all and they just made it out of honeycombs instead of making it out of rice. Somehow they have puddinged honeycombs. <laughs> that's, it's like, like, that's like the best review of anything ever. <laughs> um, these little strings just give it kind of a different texture, but it has this inner core that is just like honeycomb pudding. It is ridiculous. Like lavish, lavish. Mm. It's a surprise to absolutely no one. Athens is super, super touristy, and there is a lot of in infrastructure in the city that is basically just designed for the tourists. And you walk through areas, and it just feels a bit like a, like a theme park or something. And I mean, it's not. It's not actually a theme park, obviously. I mean, people live here and things, but it can be difficult to like sniff out maybe something that's a little more authentic, someplace that maybe somebody that has lived in Athens has ever visited. Because there's a lot of places that just seem like they are just swarmed by foreigners that are just here, probably having an experience similar to what we had for lunch where we just left kind of unhappy. So when we found this little bakery, I was quite happy because there was a bunch of like old Greek ladies sitting outside like eating some cake. And I was like, okay, this is our place. Like, it doesn't look fancy. There's no extra crap going on. It's just cakes and stuff. Is so, there free Wi-Fi? Is there free Wi-Fi? If there's free Wi-Fi, that's actually a strike against. You're hoping for no free Wi-Fi. Because if there's free Wi-Fi, they're catering to others. Um, others is me, but in this case, I don't want to be others. I want to be as Greek as possible. <laughs> Uh, and I got something that looks kind of standard. It's just a big piece of cake with an orange slice on top. But there was a dude in here and Katie was like, do you work here? And he was like, no, but I can help you. <laughs> he was like, this was really good yesterday. So, all right, we gave it a go. And um, I didn't expect for it to be so big. I'm not used to my sweets being like so, like, dekai. And uh, it felt a little bit stiff as I went into it. My pistachio baklava thing is the size of a small sea slug. <laughs> This has a very good flavor. It is um, a heavy cake. It is not like a light, like fluffy cake. It, uh, the dough or whatever is like a lot, there's a, there's, a, there's a thickness to it. Batter. The batter, yeah, there we go, that's the right word. Um, and it's got orange cooked into it and stuff. And it's, I mean, it's a good piece of cake. I think, uh, personally, I probably would have thrown some frosting or something on top. Maybe I'll You steal. can put the sea slug on top. I'm gonna steal some sea slug, honey sea slug, and I'm gonna put it on top, and I think that's gonna make it really nice further dissection of this sea slug has brought us to a layer that contains cinnamon and nuts. And that's fantastic. Do all sea slugs contain that? <laughs> Only one way to find out. <laughs> I feel bad for the next sea slug, sea slug that I see. That's a really, I feel bad for the next sea slug that I see. <laughs> okay, I did it good that time. We have made a conscious effort to get out of the touristy areas of Athens today and we have walked into a little neighborhood that seems like fairly residential and I think we're going to show you a little bit of that in a few minutes but on the way into the neighborhood we have decided it is time for some breakfast and the way Katie found this was she looked on Google Maps and found something that didn't have any English written at all and just looked for like Greek lettering and that was it and it was like a breakfast style place and it is just like a little stand and they sell pastries and things like that. And we just walked up to the dude and we were like, what's the best thing you've got? And he gave us two recommendations. One is this flaky bread that's got chicken and cheese in it, apparently. And the other is this super long bread that has cream cheese in it, like Philadelphia cream cheese, I think is what we're gonna explore. So I'm gonna get into the chicken and cheese thing first because uh, I don't know, it just looks like my guy. It kind of looks like a hot pocket. <laughs> and I can get down on some hot pockets, y'all. It's like the best hot pocket in the world. Um, 
It's got the same kind of bread consistency as a Hot Pocket does, believe it or not, even though it's really flaky. The top layer is flaky, but the rest of it has got a little more like substance. Whoa, the cheese is top notch. Very, very, very good. Uh, that may have ruined me for Hot Pockets. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a shock. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this guy. He actually is breaking now. And you can see that this is kind of like a, um, not like a, like a thick cheese. I guess it should be more like a feta or something like that. Like it's a, the type of cheese that would fall apart. So like a cream cheese, but um, not like out of a tube or something like it is in the States. Like this probably is like, you know, good. <laughs> This is okay. Um, the cheese flavor is a bit more mild. It's it's pretty good. It's not the hot pocket though. The hot pocket might have me coming back for more. Taking it up a notch. <laughs> you created a monster. This neighborhood that we walked around this morning is called Exarchia. I, I'm gonna let you go with that. And it is, um, I was reading online a little bit because we were looking up trying to find some like specific street art in the area, which is what it's kind of famous for. And apparently it's kind of a sketchy neighborhood or at least the locals think so. Like it's like, they, they're like, oh, there's lots of like dangerous anarchists and stuff. And as we walked around it, I was like, wow, it's really pleasant here and there's lots of trees and... A highly suggested baklava. Yeah, the highly suggested <laughs> baklava. And there's just like coffee shops and it just seems very residential. And I was just mentioning how nice it would be to like actually live here. Just because it, it's so pleasant, like incredibly mm. pleasant with all the, the trees basically. Like running up and down these hills and everything. But the thing that I think might sketch some people out is the amount of graffiti that's in the area. And there is a lot in... We are actually at a university right now. Yeah. And What's behind this is, it? The, this is wall the, university. Of the university, but you might think like at a university, like the kids are going to go a little bit wild. So, mm, yeah, that might be the case here. But I think it's more along the lines of that the people in this neighborhood have gone wild, and the university wasn't able to keep them out because mm -hmm. everything outside of here is crazy too. And like that's even coming from a place that like Athens has got quite a lot of graffiti in the normal areas, but here it's just really cranked up. And it's a lot of different types of graffiti. Some of it, I would go as far to say, could be classified as street art. So it's like quite good and well done. And then some of it is just garbage tags. And then there's stuff that's just in between where it's really well done tags. And then there's some that's like ideological wise, it's just there for beauty. And some is there for a political statement. And some of there's for like memorial and stuff like that. So it's not just all like in one direction. It's a, a variety of things that you might see as well. A lot of people watching stuff like this or maybe that would come through a neighborhood like this might be like, oh, that's really horrible that this is like this and stuff. But I just think it sort of actually gives the neighborhood its personality. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's coming from somebody, I didn't grow up here or anything. It maybe the city its personality it really, in a way. It really, it really does. Um, maybe people that have lived here forever think it's horrible that this has happened to their city, or maybe this has been going on forever and it's just a part of what's going on. But as somebody who has only been here for a few days and is just a visitor, I see it and I'm just like, wow, it's like, it's part of the city's pulse. It's part of the heartbeat of the place. And I don't see it as like dangerous or anything. Um, I, I, I really quite liked walking through the neighborhood and just looking at the amount of color and stuff that's going on. And the people walking around don't seem like sketchy. Like it's not like that kind of vibe that's going on. Well, we went like, to that one park. There was one park, there was one park where there was some dudes doing drugs. <laughs> yeah, they were definitely doing some drugs. <laughs> but and, yeah. outside of that little park, like it's just been college students and like older people walking around and mm. like it's been totally fine. Um, I don't know. I really think it's cool to come and explore this little neighborhood that is not quite on the normal path of tourists. Like, this isn't like, I don't think there are very many tourists over here at all, to be completely honest. Which I was kind of surprised. I, I've really felt that we were going to get to some, and, and that will tell, this will tell you how I feel about this area. Um, I thought that we were going to go to some area where it, like there were tons of walls and people had just put murals upon murals upon murals in the area and there would be a lot of tourists there taking pictures because that there would be a, like a central location. There's not really a central location for the street find. art. And this there's everywhere. There's not really a map and there's not really like any guidance and I think 
it aggravates me to no end not being a go to point A and that will find you this. You, you're, we're not finding that for this area and that drives me nuts mentally. But I think that goes along with what is happening here. Like it's not supposed to be point A to point B or whatever. It is it's street art. It's graffiti. It's find it if you do. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, maybe you missed a gem and that's driving me nuts. <laughs> the whole neighborhood is basically a canvas and it's not a small area mm. either. It's like quite a yeah. large region. We, we got here at nine? like nine yeah. and we, it's, it's like now 12 and we're still walking around going, what's this? What's that? What's this? Oh, I haven't been over here. We went down the street before already, but yeah, it, it is, we haven't Scratch the surface. We even. Yes, that's what exactly. Yeah. And and I, that, I'm looking forward to finding other neighborhoods that are maybe outside of yeah. the, the touristy like draw and seeing what kind of like atmosphere and feeling that they've got going on mm. and see what the uniqueness of the different areas of Athens is going to be. Yeah. Still angry? Yeah. <laughs> Today during our walk, we actually happened upon one of the shops that I've heard has the best baklava in town. And I was a little surprised at the shop because when you hear that something has the best baklava in town, you think, oh, that's probably their main focus. You're gonna go into a shop and it's just gonna be baklava. But this shop was not like that. The outside of the shop was very polished, kind of looked a little bit like a present. And when you walk inside, there were tons and tons of different types of desserts. And I, I walked around trying to find the baklava. It took me some time. So I was really surprised that if this has the best baklava, it's just sitting in the back of the store. And I asked the guy when, after I'd ordered the baklava, what's your favorite? And he said, baklava. <laughs> Well, what's all this other stuff doing in here? Anywho, I'm gonna give it a try and see how good it is. So like, what is baklava for those who may not have been aware of its existence? Can you describe it? <laughs> uh, it's like a flaky pastry. It's called like phyllo or something like that. And then there is, uh, I'm not an expert by any means. I believe there's caramel. No, 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 not caramel, sorry. Honey, lots of honey. Nuts and cinnamon. Gonna say that those might be the basics. Do you need more for something delicious? I really don't think so. And uh, this is what they've got. It always crumbles like this. You're never gonna get like a straight piece. Yeah. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, could you mess up baklava? And I think you could, but if you took like a turd and you <laughs> drenched it in honey and just let it sit there for a while, I'm sure you could convince some people that's a delicacy. <laughs> I'm gonna start keeping my turds, we're gonna trick you. I'm gonna fall for it and be like, this is the best. I think the key is to make sure that it's super soggy, like down here. Like, look how incredibly wet that is. Mm. And I also heard that some people go nuts about the recipe for baklava. And they say that it has to have 33 layers of uh, the little flaky pastry. So I didn't count all the layers. I don't know if this is a legit piece if it doesn't have 33 layers. <laughs> but it's darn tasty. We've come to a restaurant that was recommended and it took us a while to find the restaurant. <laughs> We've heard that it's about 200 years old. I don't think that's true because I looked up some of the oldest restaurants in Athens and I was seeing like stuff in the hundreds and this place wasn't even listed. So I, I'm gonna take that with a grain of salt. But we did find it. You actually have to go down some stairs. Like there, there's no sign outside that I really saw. It's just somebody opens up a cellar. You go down in here and there are barrels. So I get the impression that this has been kind of a wine place, at least at some point. I mean, there's wine here now, but there's also food. And uh, the food that we've gotten is a bean soup. I've heard that bean soup is kind of important here, but I I'm not really sure. These are big beans. <laughs> Mm. 
It just has a hearty flavor. Nothing overwhelming. Very, very vegetable and healthy feeling. Aside from what I can tell is a good amount of oil on the top of the soup. <laughs> As Katie mentioned, there are barrels down here and it's got a wine vibe. And we noticed everybody's table has these little glasses of wine. So we ordered these little glasses of wine and it actually comes out in like this copper container like this that he carried over to the barrel and just got out of the barrel and then brought to us, which is pretty cool. I actually very rarely drink wine that is not red wine. Not for any reason, just because that's where things tend to land for me. So I'm not gonna be a good judge, I don't think, but let's see what's going on in this little glass. I mean, it tastes, it tastes strong. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know the words to use to describe it. It's a pretty strong flavor, like um, not only in the alcohol content, but in the amount of flavor that is there. It just totally like goes all over every, the inside of your mouth. Like every taste bud is on like lit up right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's good, but I'm not a wine snob, so I'm pretty easy to please. And I got a dish that is very similar to Katie's, but it has, instead of beans, chicken. And this stuff that looks like giant rice is actually a pasta. The way that she described it, where it was like very vegetable-y and a lot of oil on the top, I think it's very similar to what's going on. I think that the soup base is the same as uh, what she's got. I don't think there's any difference there. I think it's just that this doesn't have beans. It's got pasta instead. And I got a little bit of chicken here on my, uh, on my, on my spoon. That's not a fork. When you taste the soup, you're going to think very differently. What do you mean? The soup is very uh, neutral tasting, whereas the pasta, they look the same, but they're different. Mm. Yeah, the I pasta actually has a zing. Yeah, but I think that the, the bit, what I meant was like the base of the, the, the soups is about the same, and it's the ingredients that are making it a bit different. Yeah, I mean, it tastes very healthy. It's, it's good. I expect it's probably being quite cheap, and it's pretty fun that they went and got some wine out of a barrel. <laughs> This got a real prohibition feel, like that you should be looking over your shoulder, making sure nobody's coming. We got these barrels, we don't want anyone to see them. This is the good food. You don't want anyone else to have it. Definitely feels like we're in hiding. So this place been open since 1875. That's 143 years of making food and I almost feel like it's making food for the community as opposed to making food for anything else. Like, when I say community, I mean that everybody is going to be nourished by that food. And that is exactly what this meal was, was nourishing. We're eating again. So I found out that delis are not just for grabbing some meat and going and making a sandwich. They, this one in particular is actually very well known and it is a restaurant on top of being a deli. And you can come here, you can get your sliced meat, but you can also get a variety of dishes that are very, very popular. This one is uh, sachinaki, and it has fried eggs and two types of meat. I don't know how we're gonna determine which meat is which, but I think we're just gonna eat it and enjoy it, which that's what I'm gonna do. Um, we also got this bulgar, and we thought maybe it was gonna have a type of weird meat in it, but I don't even see any meat. So it's weird that it might be a vegetarian dish at a deli. <laughs> we'll try the sachinaki first. It says there's also tomato in here. It looks really, really hot. And I burnt my mouth really bad yesterday. So now I am actually looking for the heat waves. I don't want to hurt myself again. Yeah, there's like a pastrami of some sort, which is a thicker, harder meat. And then there is like a, I don't know how to find them in here, a looser meat. 
He's lost in there. I'm not which not not sure where he is, but a thinner meat is also in there. What is bulgur? I don't know. Is it just rice or pasta or something? Is it the type of grain? The flavors in here are homely but exciting at the same time. Very good stuff. I would never think that a deli would be a place you'd go and sit down and have probably one of the best meals you've had in Athens. Okay, so I'm gonna try some of this little meat. They brought this out, we didn't order it, and we don't know if we're gonna be charged for it. It's like one of those like, oh, table fee things or whatever, like in Japan. It's really, really thin. The flavor's got nowhere to hide. This is delicious. And I think that I'm really happy they brought that out because we didn't order anything that was super like what you would expect at like a deli, a deli, like a sandwich, you know, like just with, like slices of meat or something. So I'm glad I got to try some of that like that. And we just had this long conversation about like, Katie was just saying like, you don't go to a deli to eat food. And I was like, but you kind of do. Like that's what a deli is. And I think what's, what's throwing us here is that it's not just like a sandwich. And um, that's something that I think you would get at a deli. And but here we've ordered like home cooked meals. And it's not just like, you know, they didn't just put some ham on some bread and then like some cheese and then give you a sandwich. It was like somebody had a kitchen involved with this. And also this place looks very much like a butcher and it feels like you're eating at a butcher as opposed to eating in like a Della Contestant in New York City or something. It's just got this vibe with all this meat hanging around you and sitting right next to the cooler for the, for, for the, for the meat and everything. This feels like a place you wouldn't be getting a home-cooked meal. All right, so uh, at this little deli, there were some uh, older guys sitting behind us and they got this bottle of booze and they are just sitting down in the afternoon having some. So I asked them what it is, like, not them, but the, the staff, like, what is that? And they said it's called ouzel. And we've seen this word before, and it's kind of like the local spirit in Greece. And it's got kind of like a pasties, absinthe kind of feel to it. Um, we saw the guys get it, and they added water to it. Yeah, they're mixing it with water. So we ordered shots, but there, there's no room in that glass for water. You could put, like, a drop. <laughs> So we're just gonna do it up live and see what's up. Smell it. It smells like a white Nico wafer or licorice yeah. or. Uh, it smells, yeah, it smells just like pastis. All right, what are we doing this to? Well, there's there's some things I gotta get down first. Is it are we just downing the whole thing? Because you're gonna tell me that I'm a monster <laughs> if I down the whole thing. Are we doing that I'm just or are we enjoy sips? it? Maybe I'll have half. Okay, we're we're sips. And All right, but what are we cheers and let's cheers to the old dudes. No? I was out? thinking, I, I, there's just so much meat hanging from the ceiling that <laughs> that's where my brain was, but to old dudes. Alright, to old dudes and they're hanging meat. Yep. <clears throat> Whoa! That tastes amazing. It's really strong. It's very good. Yeah, it's very good. It's extremely strong. It would burn a hole through the table. But it's it's like I don't know how do you even explain. It's a Nico wafer. What? Uh, it's a dangerous, dangerous <laughs> Nico wafer. The white if, ones. If oh, had, and I love them. Had or, or the black ones. No, they're the black ones, not the white ones. Oh my goodness, I got my Nico yeah, wafer. Yeah, you're right. You're up. right. It's the black ones. Yeah. yeah this is like a yeah a Nico wafer or a black jelly bean that could kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a Jack <gasps> black jelly bean. What if they took black jelly beans and they put this stuff inside? Or what if they put black jelly beans in this stuff? I get down on that. <laughs> you had some jelly beans the other day. Any black ones in there? No, no. Uh, no it's just ghetto. Never mind. We can't go that far <laughs> with this dream. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is a sweet carrot? That is a sweet carrot on top of Greek yogurt. And this is a dessert that was just given to us free on the house. I am quite happy about that. And it turns out that the meat that they put down for us to just have a flavor of what this place is was also complimentary. I cannot believe this. And I don't know why I can't believe it, but it's a really nice just treat on the side. I And we were talking about it being Ikea rules. Like you go to Ikea, you do all the shopping, you have your arguments, you get upset, and then you have some ice cream at the end and you completely forget about any bad times you had at Ikea. Ikea rules. 
but it's not necessary here. We didn't have any bad times. No, <laughs> I had a delightful time. But let's see, how sweet can you make a carrot? It's like yams. You getting a good zoom in on that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to describe that other than like, it's almost like this is a liqueur, like a, a syrup in a way. And just uber, uber sweet. The texture of the carrot is what is remaining and is staying there and it's just, it's really good. I, I, I was saying I could make something on this table. It's not this. <laughs> After lunch, we went to one of the many bakeries that are here. There is no shortage of bakeries whatsoever, from small ones to medium-sized ones to mom-and-pop shops to the, the ones that we found some baklava at the other day that have a rainbow of pastries. And the one that we went to, I say, was medium-sized. And we found this. We don't know what's inside. It had no tag on it. I had to ask what the price was. Thankfully, she didn't tell me what was inside because we kind of just wanted to be surprised. And we've ended up with some uh, backup friends of baklava, just in case this is weird. We, we both think it might be butter. <laughs> just straight butter. If it's butter, I don't want to eat it. <laughs> that does not look like a good start for butter. This it, is like a hostess cake. Yeah. Kind of. I don't I'm I'm shocked that someone would go through all the effort it would take to put this in that container. Maybe it has to do with the way it's cooked. Does it maybe it cooks like that? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, we've got some chocolate on top that is a a bit soggy. Interesting that it has some condensation on it or wetness. Um, white cream, some sort of brown cream over here. That's looking cocoa-esque. But I'm gonna take a full bite and find out <laughs> what is this. And I've been wondering to myself, like if a Greek person walks into a bakery, they know everything that's in there? They just know it? <laughs> They've had it since childhood? Would they have known what was in the little silver foil? Would they have known? So it's essentially like a backwards cake. So you know how you have a cake and it might be layered like you'd have um, cake and then icing and then cake and then icing. This is icing, cake, icing, cake. So it's like a so, Chicago deep dish cake Yeah. in Athens. <laughs> it is uh, pretty interesting to do that backwards. Do you, know, do, you, do you know why the foil exists or is it just um, because possibly that the icing wouldn't be able to support the cake on top. The uh -huh. cake's going to have more weight than the icing, so it would slowly start pushing it and you'd uh, end up with icing structure. on the side. Okay. Um, so I guess we kind of get it. And it's a really great idea because I prefer the icing to the cake. <laughs> um, this is genius. We found out that uh, night hiking is pretty fun and pretty easy and better than daytime hiking because uh, the sun sucks. <laughs> um, we came up to the top of this mountain that I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of and it's got a gorgeous view of Athens and a gorgeous view of the Parthenon and the Acropolis. and. A kind of cool backstory that apparently Athena dropped this mountain in the haste of having trying to cover up her 
baby that she had had through some terrible in encounter and uh, she dropped this mountain here and it, that's where it came from. And another bit of lore about this mountain is it used to be the refuge for wolves. They would come up here and hide away from the people in the town. Wait, was that for real, the wolves part? I don't know if it's for real. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it could be, <laughs> which is cool. Um, so this is the, uh, the, the name of the mountain means uh, the one of the wolves. Uh, the, the Hill of the Wolves, and uh, that's just pretty cool lure that I thought, hmm, I like that. And the walk at night is amazing. Once you get to the top, it gets a bit drunk. There's a lot of drinkers up here. And, uh, but the view, totally amazing, absolutely. Yeah. Think we could do this at our apartment in Tokyo? <laughs> I don't even know if we'll be able to walk around. It looks like Bart Simpson if somebody ripped Bart's face off. He'd still be yellow underneath. <laughs> <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this second video from Athens as much as we enjoyed eating all the amazing food we came across. One more video from this series and then it's on to a new one from Japan. Make sure you're subscribed. Liking and commenting helps us too.